Hey everyone, welcome back to Workshop Quick Takes. Thanks for joining us again on our YouTube channel. In part four of this little mini series, we are still trying to answer the question, why won't my 2005 Honda CRV's front end stop shaking? The fourth thing that we haven't tried yet, we've already done compliance bushings on the front control arms, we've looked at ball joints, we've dealt with some engine mount issues, and now we're gonna look at CV axles. And yes, this is a higher mileage vehicle, so we are going to find problems. Interestingly, we're not gonna solve it, but once we get through changing those CV axles, we'll go to the tire shop one more time and see if we can get this solved for good. Okay, this is going to be a weird one, but let's see if we can figure out what's going on with it's this axle or something on the other side. So we'll start with this side. Okay, I think we're clear. As the saying goes, when your only tool is a miniature action camera, every problem looks like filmable subject material. Really need to get that back of camera installed in here. Or something like that. Our motivation here was that a couple mechanics had suggested that Honda axles of a certain vintage were sometimes known for warping. But CV axles are a pain to replace, and while they're not exactly expensive, they're also not free. We were hoping to prove whether or not this one really had a problem. Well, just made it out of the driveway, and so far I have not heard the $150 sound of a GoPro going under a tire. Okay, here it goes. But, as another saying goes, I duct taped a GoPro to a control arm and all I got was this interesting footage. It does show what suspension motion looks like at a range of vehicle speeds, but it didn't prove whether we had a bad axle. So, it looks like we'll just have to start taking things apart and see what we find. Okay, back on the 2005 Honda CRV, we have replaced a ball joint. We replaced a couple lower control arms. I was checking the maintenance log. The lower ball joint over here was previously replaced, which is why it looked so good when we were last under there. Even with that and the engine mount that was shaking, uh, we still don't know why this thing vibrates, but it does feel like it's coming from the front. And there's two clues that it might be coming from the front axle somewhere. When we accelerate, it decreases. When we let off the gas and now the vehicle is pushing back against the engine, it increases. So when you see behavior like that, the changes with loading, it could be something vibrating in a, a bearing or something that's out of balance. Now the tire would be the first culprit, but we had those balanced, we had it aligned. That leaves the possibility that the axle shaft is bent. Here is hopefully our replacement axle. It looks like the right one. There's a couple clues on that. First off, the right front axle for this Honda, it has a spline insert on this side. Reason for that being is that there is a stub axle between the transfer case coming out of the transmission and this here. A stub axle with a bearing mount that is up in there and that bearing is another possible source of problems but if the bearing itself was loose enough to be shaking we'd be getting awful awful things happening to us all the time and then on this end the other clue that i was talking about is this is very much a honda axle nut today we are lifting this corner only removing just this wheel we'll be working mainly on this side As with our previous ball joint episode in this series, we're assuming this isn't your first time doing suspension and axle work. Although a CV axle can be done with basic tools, we don't recommend this one for someone who has never done suspension work before. You will need to properly lift and support the vehicle for major disassembly of structural components and accept the corresponding risk. Next step is going to be breaking the torque on this main axle bolt. Regardless of what order you want to do things down here, do this before removing the brakes. Now, if you have a really strong impact wrench and want to try and use that, maybe you'll get away with it. But if you're using a breaker bar, definitely make sure someone else is standing on the brakes. This style here has that little uh, pushed in piece. We need to take a really big hefty screwdriver, not a cheap one, it will break. A really big hefty screwdriver or pry bar and bash that back out. And that being said, since we're doing a multi-part series here, we strongly recommend referring back to that second episode. The disassembly stage is the same process and we'll only cover it briefly here. But once we get everything pulled apart on the front end, we'll take the additional step of pulling out the axle half shafts. Now I've previously done this with a breaker bar several times, so today let's just try an impact for a while and see if it starts to move. If it does, we're home free. If not, Okay, we now got a fully charged compressor, so let's see if this will loosen it without having to go to the complicated way. Yeah, it's moving. Way easier than the breaker bar if you have the option. 
Okay, today this bottom bolt here is coming off with a 21 millimeter. The size and type of bolt will depend on the ball joint. Again, this one's already been replaced once before. Today, since we're into using the correct tools, let's see if we can get the air gun under here. Almost correct tools. This is technically not an impact rated socket. Everything's easier with a good strong air wrench. This next step tends to be bad for your alignment. Usually there's a little bit of play in these holes here and once you loosen and retighten these, it's, this knuckle's never in quite the same position it was before. But I think that's really our best way of getting at the axle. But other than that, we're getting close. This may not work for you every time, but in this case it looks like I can just get my gun past the uh, brakes here without having to remove them. Well, it looks like I got those torqued to a spec that it meets or exceeds nice and tight, so I'll have to do this the old-fashioned way. Lefty Lucy. Whew! I wonder if that was actually the alignment shop that did that to me. I know I got these tight, but not this tight. These feel like they've just been zipped on with the biggest air wrench they had and said good enough. Okay, this one did not pop out particularly violently. It's a nice plus. And there we go. All right, we will now be able to pull the axle out of the wheel bearing and hub assembly here. Yeah, doing pretty good. Now it's loose. Should have free access to the axle now. That should be all we need to remove the axle. May need some coaxing to come off of that stub axle shaft. Kind of see what our trouble is there. I'm not sure there's a good way to take that off without like an air hammer or something. If we pry that dust shield open. Get some penetrating oil back up in there. Okay, let that sit for a bit and hopefully ferment. Well, I double checked with a couple other YouTubers were doing, it and this is it. Apparently, sometimes you just have to hit it with a few taps from different angles, and it'll pop, finally pop loose. So let's give it a shot. Unfortunately, as this process went on, we began to suspect that something more was happening. On the left front of this vehicle, the CV axle goes directly to the transmission case, but here on the right side, it connects to the intermediate shaft. The intermediate shaft then connects to the transmission. In most cases, the intermediate shaft is reusable, but if you've got something going on in the right front wheel or axle, the intermediate shaft might also be a casualty. There was play in all of the pieces which should have popped apart using reasonable force. But so far, there was a suspicious lack of popping. I've discovered by playing with this that I do, I'm not actually bound up on the splines itself. I can slide in and out about that much, which means I should be able to just finish pulling this off that way. But this wiggles this way on the splines, which means something's been vibrating long enough that it's actually damaged everything in there. And now it's jammed up. I can't just pull that off and I can't get enough leverage to try and force it. So. I have a feeling that in addition to the CV axle we've already procured, we're going to need a new shaft and carrier assembly, or at least a used one from a junkyard. I'm afraid it's now time to park the vehicle and uh, maybe have a pro shop come back to this where they can work on it on a lift. Because then there's three more bolts for this heat shield and a couple of them are hidden back up behind. And then three more to remove this carrier bearing. And it's just incredibly awkward to work to get to it on the floor. A younger version of myself would have gone after it, but at this point I think I gotta quit. Okay, let's take a look at the equipment that we pulled out of the Honda. As promised, this did end up going to the shop and they were able to get it out on the lift. Here's the CV axle. Um, as expected, it is pretty banged up in here from vibrating. Kind of see some of the bidding and knockout on the spline teeth there. It's been vibrating for a while and bashed everything down a bit. On the other side of that, we had this guy here. This end was over in the transmission and looks fine. 
This end here on, at the carrier bearing, however, is where the same thing was going on. Here we can see again pitting and knockout on these teeth, especially the end here. But you look at some of these uh, splines here, and they're a little bit shiny and gouge here towards the end where it was vibrating back and forth. So this piece definitely need to be replaced regardless of whatever else might be going on with it. Most of the parts stores that would normally have these did not. Rather than try and go to order it from the dealer and whatever that might take, I think about six, seven hundred dollars potentially, I got a remanufactured one for about two hundred off of eBay. Then looking here at the CV axle, not too much to say about it. I mean, we go on this end. That sounds like it's still doing everything it's supposed to be doing, but then we get on this end. Hear that clatter? That was definitely going out. And so this was a problem, but now we have a conundrum. This, even though it clearly needed to be replaced and it was vibrating, is not responsible for the shaking at the front end of the vehicle. It's still doing it pretty much exactly like it was before, so maybe the front left CV axle is bad also. Maybe the steering rack is going bad? I, I don't know, because uh, the tie rod end links seem fine. But we're going to keep going because we are finding worn out parts everywhere on the front of the suspension as we go. And they do need to be replaced. But so far we haven't found the answer for the problem that got us looking in the first place. Since we've now done the right front CV axle and intermediate shaft without completely solving our problem, the next logical thing to do is the left front CV axle. Since we are at site number two, aka Dad's Garage, we're going to continue using technology to make life easier. Okay, for today's adventure, I think we're going to just take off the uh, upper knuckle here and let it slide forward on the ball joint. Hopefully that gives it enough play to come out. To do that, we need a 12 to remove this bracket here for the brake line. These I can either unclip you from the back using a pair of pliers, or I can use a 10 millimeter bolt on here and just remove that whole bracket. And I think that's probably safer given that this is old plastic and I'd like to try to avoid breaking it. Okay, that should be more than enough play to rock the entire knuckle without breaking anything. terrible. That one a little more terrible. Okay, before we attempt to pull the axle out of the transmission, just a quick look at what we're fighting against here on the new one. It's this C-clip right here. That's there to just give it some uh, tension so it won't just pop out, and sometimes that can be a real bear to take care of. But hopefully since we've actually got the transmission case to provide leverage, we should be able to pop it out. There we go. That's what you're looking for. Kind of see some glistening in there. This thing is actually open to the transfer case. The oil seal doesn't look like it's leaking at all. And the sitting position of the fluid in there is apparently below the level of where the axle sits. So it only washes around in there when the gears are turning and the pumps are running and so on. Quick comparison check just to make sure that we've actually got what we think we've got. These are both the same length. They appear to have the same spline on the end. Same spline, same C-clip. This end looks identical. Slight difference over here is this one is beveled in, but it has the exact same dust shield here, so I think that's just to reduce the amount of material and weight that comprises the axle. Otherwise, it should be the exact same thing, same spline, so the whole works. Definitely see some seal wear there on the old one, though, those little uh, banding marks there where it's been turning, but nothing catastrophic. The instructions for the new axle explicitly say to grease this ring before putting it in. I mean, it has a little bit on it now, but not a lot. And I prefer to do the whole shaft anyway, just to make sure that it slides in there without banging up the splines. I'm just going to do this whole area right here. Again, we're not frosting a cake, but we want enough on there that everything just slides in nice. I don't want a whole bunch hanging on the end here, because then it's going to end up in the uh, ATF, and I'm not sure what effect that would actually have on it. I'm going to go ahead and wait on the other end until we have this installed. Okay, splines have engaged. 
Okay, that was all it took. That one snapped easier than I expected. And the way I know it's in there is first I felt it go past the snap ring, and then second, just looking at the amount of gap back there, about the same as we had before, I can just barely work this bar behind it, so I know we're good. This piece here, I don't think it needs any Molly Fortified grease. I'm just gonna use, what is this anyway? Eh, mobile One. Just red lithium grease is fine over here. Alrighty. Once again, the remaining assembly steps are the reverse of disassembly. A local, low-speed test drive is always recommended after having this much of the car taken apart, since you don't want to discover a serious assembly error by immediately traveling across the city. Okay. And the vehicle will definitely need an alignment. So make sure to get that phone call made before doing any long-distance or high-speed driving. Hey everyone, thanks for joining us again. This concludes our little mini-series on the 2005 Honda CRV. What was the actual problem? Well, once we got the CV axles done, the shop had a point. They said, we don't really know if we solved the problem that you think you have, but here's one more thing you could check. Maybe you've got a tire that's starting to separate internally and it's out of balance. And no matter how many times you actually balance the wheel, once you get on the highway, then it starts shaking again. Well, our tires were near the end of their life. Said, okay, we got to do it anyway. Got our tires changed and lo and behold, everything was fine. And unfortunately, that is a problem that can happen with tires. You can get the wheel balanced and it balances on the machine, but once you get going at highway speeds, then the combined effects of the wheel spinning at very high speeds, the weight of the vehicle being on it and everything articulating around, whatever it is that's out of balance in there, will actually start shaking on the highway when it does not on the wheel balancer. It's a very tricky problem to solve, but as you saw from this series, we actually found a lot of other problems along the way that were going to cause the exact same thing eventually, even though it turns out they weren't causing it now. So. That finally answers the question. I got a little pile of maintenance out of the way. It was expensive, but not as expensive as replacing this vehicle. So you pay for it and you keep driving it. Anyway, thanks for coming along with us. We'll see you again next time, whenever that is. Has anyone seen my phone?